Good morning. Good morning. We are hearing you. Can uh, you hear morning, us? Professor Avci. On behalf of an organizing committee and all my colleagues, uh, let me greet you and thank you for participating in live surgery. So could you introduce your uh, challenging case, introduce your uh, surgical plan and, of course, uh, new surgical system? Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I, I will um, do a surgery with fresh retinal detachment case, with certificate case. Uh, there's a, a large tear on the superior quadrant and also macula of retinal detachment. So this is our uh, regular setup for um, retinal detachment surgery. I use a hybrid trocor system 223 and the infusion is 27. Also, I use chandelier night or light uh, regularly. This is my standard setup. So, you know, the new trocar system has very uh, easy uh, connection, so you don't need to remove the uh, valve. And uh, after uh, opening the infusion, uh, as you see here, uh, we can connect easily the infusion with uh the trocar so this is okay uh, i use uh, methyl cellulose to keep cornea clean during surgery uh, uh, wet during surgery and now uh, we'll start with for vitrectomy and we will go into the eye yes okay as you see now, I think you can see the uh, 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 vitreous cavity. This is our view. As you see, there's a, uh, almost bolus retinal detachment. And we have a very large uh, retinal tear here. On my left hand, I use a, a shielded uh, total view and delineation probe because I don't like the light like this, because in bullet light, usually the light comes into the, uh, uh, everywhere and it, it's really not good for surgeon, also not good for a uh, video recording, but when uh, we used uh, shielded light, as you see here, the uh, view is better and illumination is much better. So uh, let me start to do core vitrectomy first. And uh, I use TDC, 23 gauge trocar, uh, you know the cation grade is in totally is sixteen uh, thousand per minute, and uh, retina is very mobile. After removal uh, vitrectomy, I will uh, inject perfluorocarbon carbon to reattach the retina on the posterior pole, and then continue to remove vitreous uh, on the vitreous base. But first we remove the core vitrectomy. We have to do core vitrectomy. The view is clear on the auditorium. So I think it's clear enough if there is no complaining. Okay, so we finished already core vitrectomy. Now I, I will inject PFO carbon. So as you see, so I uh, would like to prefer to keep posterior pole stable during vitrectomy. Uh, and usually I inject PFO until the age of uh, retinal tear to stabilize the posterior pole. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay now. The tear is very, very large uh, tear. It's not giant tear, but it's irregular retinal tear. So the retina is posterior pole is attached. So uh, we will start to clean the vitreous base with indentation. So uh, after rough uh, vitreous base cleaning, uh, maybe I can prefer shaving, vitreous base shaving uh, to clean the, all the vitreous on the vitreous base. I think you can see the 
uh, indentation clearly. Uh, I can I do my own indentation. Usually I do not uh, like the assistance indentation. Koşuklar neden hipoten oluşuyor? Sorun var mı? Üç yüz elli yapım akımı da. So there is no retinal tear in the inferior part of the retina. If you have question, uh, you can ask me and I can answer the question, uh, but uh, I will try to explain all the steps. Now we are doing vitro's base uh, cleaning. Also, I use dual uh, linear system uh, to during vitrectomy because I would I like to arrange cutting rate, also aspiration uh, rate uh, in my uh, from my foot pedal. I can change the cutting and aspiration rate from time to time, uh, and therefore dual uh, linear mode of vitrectomy I will, I'm I'm using during uh, surgery in almost in all my surgeries. So uh, there is no retinal detachment in this area, but I will show you now. There is a small retinal tear just over here. Maybe you can see. Yes, that's that's the white area. Is small retinal tear. I will make a mark there for with diathermy to do laser later on. Could you please give me diathermy? Mm -hmm. uh, usually in retinal pseudofocal retinal detachment case we observe more than one retinal tear and therefore uh, better to uh, mark it with diathermy during surgery to not forget it later on uh, so there's a small retinal tear there I will uh, put a mark with diathermy then I will do laser uh, at, the end of, after sur uh, at the end of surgery so We will see the nasal part of the retina also, clean the vitreous space. It's almost. Finish the vitreous base cleaning on the inferior part. These are the superior nasal part. Then, uh, Uh, professor, do you hear us? Yes. Um, uh, could you tell us about shave regime? What uh, uh, rate of cut, cut rate, and aspiration? Uh, the cut rate is, is the maximum. Usually, I use TDC cutter is six thousand, eight thousand cut rate. The uh, aspiration is about three hundred millimeter mercury. And also there is a question about uh, canalog or other suspensions or dyes uh, just to see the um, posterior hyaloid. Do you use it in your routine practice? Uh, actually, uh, this patient has uh, already read a uh, posterior hyaloid detachment. So uh, if I need, I use canalog to visualize vitreous, but regularly I don't use it. Uh, in this patient, I can uh, easily see the vitreous and therefore I didn't uh, think that it's necessary, but sometimes I can use. But it's not my regular uh, technique. I do not use regularly canalog to visualize the vitreous. We are going to shaving mode now to um, could you shave uh, during uh, this are is very mobile retina, and therefore we need Stable retina, as you see, we can clean the vitreous, but there is no uh, fluctuation of the retina because of the pressure is 
so low and also we use flow mode not the vacuum mode of the uh, pump system uh, professor uh, uh, infusion 27 gauge right yes and uh, incisions uh, for instruments 23 gauge yes and uh, do you feel any imbalance i mean maybe a hypotony because 27 and 23 very interesting combination so this is a good question um uh, in a smart iop system in dork smart iop system provide us a stable uh, pressure on the vitros uh, even uh, with 27 gauge uh, infusion 27 gauge infusion with new trocor system is really uh, provide enough uh, infusion during this hybrid system i tried this uh, test this many times and and therefore there is no problem with smart iop with active intraocular pressure system and with new trocor system you can do easily without any hypotony problem infusion is enough to keep normal pressure in the vitreous cavity so now uh, we are on the uh, retinal tear area so we a uh, little uh, cut the retinal uh, 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 flap as you see here and then but there is a, a bridging vessel here and therefore i will do diathermy before cutting that to bleed uh, to prevent bleeding but uh, let me finish the vitreous first. So as you see, this is a uh, shaving mode and vitreous uh, retina is very stable uh, and not big dangers to uh, make hydrogenic retinal tear. Don't use this in the standard vitreous based shaving, but if uh, there's a fresh retinal detachment, if the retina is very mobile, I prefer this shaving mode. Maybe it's time consuming, but it's much safer comparing the standard uh, system. Uh, Professor, how truly uh, do you clean uh, the uh, periphery? So, in the retinal uh, the detachment case, I try to clean the vitreous as much as possible to prevent PVR complications. But now, if you almost finish the vitreous based cleaning, uh, the inferior and also to the uh superior part but there is still some vitreous here and then we will give more uh perfluorocarbon. carbon but uh in such patient uh, after injection of uh, pfo and uh, uh, attachment of the posterior pole here there is a retinal bridging but i will not cut this uh, 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 bridge but i will do diatherm there could you please give that to me? Um, to prevent bleeding later on. So this is the bridging vessels here. Yeah, it's okay. But I don't need to cut it. So, okay. So as you see, the posterior pole is uh, attached, but the periphery is detached. So you can see the tear here. Now I will do fluid air exchange. Uh, and to uh, attach the periphery of the vitreous, I will show you now. Now air, uh, air is coming. And you can see the view under air. And here is the retinal tear. So we will remove all the uh, fluid, uh, supraretinal fluid with this uh, technique. In the interval, no? And I, I'm doing indentation to bring the superretinal fluid from other part of the peripheric retina to the retinal tears. Now uh, we are on the retinal tear area. I think the view is not so bad under air. Now we are doing passive aspiration of the fluid. Uh, uh, now the retina is almost completely attached. Now we remove, but still there is some remnants of the fluid. Uh, you can see the indentation is bring the fluid from the 
the temporal part to the retinal tear. And wait a few seconds to clean the vitreous as uh, the fluid as much as possible. Uh, so retina is now completely attached. So I will do laser after this, but I will fill the uh, vitreous cavity full of vitreous cavity with perfluorocarbon uh, after uh, drying the uh, supraretinal fluid. It's almost finished. This area, there is no fluid. As you see again, again, the indentation is coming here and it's coming and now we can check, aspirate the fluid. Yeah, it's there is no fluid on the supraretinal space. Retina is completely attached. Uh, Professor, we see a good attachment and uh, what kind of uh, tamponade do you plan here? Gas or silicone oil? Uh, I will use gas. Usually, I don't like uh, uh, silicone oil in fresh retinal detachment. Almost, almost always I use gas first in the primary case. And now, uh, if it's a recurrent case, sometimes I uh, can prefer silicone oil. But usually in my technique, uh, usually I keep American uh, technique, I don't like to use silicone oil. And if even if a chronic detachment case, uh, if we need, uh, I can do retinectomy or buckles, but uh, rarely I use silicone oil. Uh, but some chronic case that we have to use silicone oil, of course. But in fresh retinal detachment, I almost never use silicone oil on the primary surgery. So now we are injecting more PFO. And now you will see clearly after uh, getting the uh, infusion again. And yes, me, yes, me, yes, me. There is that. There are some more uh, PFO I will in, uh, insert, uh, inject. Some more PFO. So during a PFO injection or indentation, this new uh, smart IOP system is really uh, very clever and they can uh, it can arrange the intraocular pressure regularly and we don't need to uh, use backflash to get uh, infusion out. And the infusion can go out uh, from the uh, uh, the fluid can go out from the infusion easily. So uh, now if we are on the infusion is on. So this is the uh, fish egg formation of PFO. Usually we don't like this, but uh, if there is a small a little hypotony into the vitreous. Uh, we can see from time to time, but we should be careful about to not go uh, to the supraretinal space of PFO. Uh, this is the area of retinal tear, as you see. Uh, it's perfectly attached. And, and also you can see the periphery of the retina is perfectly attached. We all uh, fill, uh, fill, uh, remove all supraretinal fluid, as you see here. And also maybe we can see the other part of the eye to control. Professor, why do you prefer to um, perform laser in uh, perfluorocarbon liquid? Because air tamponade gives us a more wide angle of view. And we can yes. see peripheries air, out. Air uh, tamponade is, you're right. Air tamponade is giving a, more, a wide angle view, but uh, for this patient, and I don't need wide-angle view, I need sharp view, uh, but it's not sharp enough with under air. This is the first reason. The other one, it's not uh, sharp enough. As you see here, you can see perfectly the retinal tear laser. And the second one, uh, the arrangement of laser power under air, it's not easy, but it's more uh, easy and more stable laser power under uh, PFO or under fluid. And therefore, I usually prefer to do laser under PFO, not under air. So we are doing laser now. So in this patient, there is no uh, tear on the other part of the retina. Only we have retinal, uh, retinal tear here and also inferior part. But there's some lattice degeneration is elongated uh, on this nasal part. And I will do laser also in this area. You know. This is curved laser pipe. It is it is great uh, instrument uh, to do laser to the 
superior part of the retina. And I like it very much because you can arrange the uh, curve. It is adjustable instrument um, with 23 uh, gauge system. And the power of laser is about 120 now. Uh, not so high. I don't like to do very heavy laser. Mm -hmm. There is lattice until it's elongate until they're here, and therefore I'm doing laser in this area. So the other discussion may be to do laser 360 or only the retinal tear. Um, usually, uh, young surgeon or unexperienced surgeon prefer 360 laser. Uh, actually, if we are uh, sure that there is no tear, the other part of the retina, I think it's not necessary to do laser or uh, 360 degree on the periphery because laser means more laser, more inflammation. And therefore, I prefer laser only the uh, retinal tear area, not the other area. Uh, but this is also controversial, uh, still controversial point, uh, because in this patient, in such patient, we remove the vitreous and we clean the vitreous, we remove all traction. So this is mean that there is no uh, potential traction the later uh, may create another new tear in such patient and therefore better to do laser only the, around the laser, uh, retinal tear area. So the laser is almost finished. Again, the other things, not so uh, many laser, only three to four layer or three, two to three layers of laser uh, around the edge of the retina is enough to attach the retina, uh, to make a retinopexy uh, after surgery. And therefore, a light laser, three to four uh, layer or two to three layers laser to the edge of the uh, retinal tear. So it's almost finished, but we will do laser to the inferior part as at one point, there was a retinal, small retinal tear in that area. Okay, so as you see, I think you can see clearly the retinal tear and we did laser all around the retinal tear and there is no, uh, laser necessary in this area and this amount of laser is enough you know remember this area that i marked this area there was a small retinal tear and i will do laser again this area just only this area and the other part of the uh, peripheric retina is stable there is no retinal tear this is the other uh, part maybe we can get a little bit uh, narrow the view and the retina is completely attached now uh, we will do uh, fluid uh, PFO, perfluorocarbon uh, air exchange. Then we will give c 3 f 8 gas tamponade. Professor, could you tell us uh, what advantage uh, do you see in uh, this new system by DORC? Could you please repeat the question? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what advantage of a new system do you see? new surgical system uh, by DORC. We use new EVA system. Yeah. So the advantage of new EVA system uh, in vitrectum, in FACO, actually we are not, uh, FACO is not our topic now, but in FACO it has really big advantage comparing to new standard EVA, old EVA. But even in vitrectomy, so the smart IOP system is really perfectly work. So. Uh, during this uh, surgery, I was, uh, I used to use, uh, during, for example, um, um, uh, during a PFO injection, usually I used to stop the infusion and use the back flush to remove uh, and this to uh, balance the uh, vitreous uh, pressure in the pressure on the vitreous because there is no reflux of the uh, fluid from the infusion uh, perfectly. But... In new system, it arranged the uh, intraocular pressure with smart OIOP system 
and therefore you don't need to use another instrument. You can inject PFO during a, a, a infusion is open, uh, and you uh, because uh, the infusion is go back during the injection and it balances the uh, vitreous cavity. This is uh, is one of the biggest advantage of a uh, new uh, EY system. And also uh, the cutting rate with new pro vitrectomy probe will increase to 20,000, you know. And the others that it's not also in our case, uh, the micro, uh, the supratinal um, injection uh, of fluid, uh, also another uh, advantage will be, but I did not try it yet. Now uh, we will remove the... Uh, Professor, could you tell us uh, concentration, gas concentration you will use? Yeah. Uh, Usually, use? yeah, the gas concentration, uh, if the red uh, tear is in the superior part of the retina, as uh, in our case, usually I prefer 8% C3F8, but you can prefer also maybe 12% SF6, but C3F8, uh, uh, I, uh, in my practice, I don't like to use different kind of gas, and therefore I use only C3F8 and uh, only the a range of the concentration for the duration of the gas into the vitreous cavity. But in this patient, I will use 8% uh, C3F8. But if it, the tear would be in the inferior part, I would use 10% uh, uh, C3F8. Uh, and we should after move surgery, move in this patient, after surgery, when I use 10% uh, C3F8 or 8%, I keep the patient, if the retinal tear is superior, but, but I keep the patient face down position at the first day after surgery, about 12 hours, to prevent potential retinal uh, folding on the macular uh, area. Uh, then, if the tear is uh, superior, like in this patient, for this patient, a day after surgery, I will keep the patient in a sitting position uh, not the face up position and but if the tear would be in the uh, inferior part i ask the patient to uh, keep face down position oh. at least 5 to 7 days like uh, 12 or 16 hours a day 5 to 7 days fluid, uh, face down position uh, uh, professor Pro professor do you hear us Sorry for interrupting you, but uh, we should move on to another clinical case. Thank you so much for your surgery. Okay, it's my pleasure. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank so, you so much. You, you're welcome. Samara, Увеличение. Да, вот как вам удобно, конечно, но нам бы было бы интереснее. Uh, professor, we see a picture. Yeah, yeah. so this yeah, is the final again. position. I would like to show you the final position of the eye. You can see the retina is completely attached. The, the tear is lasered, and you can see the indentation, and all the periphery uh, is completely attached, uh, and uh, there is no air, and this is the other laser area, and this is the nasal part, and uh, we will uh, give now gas and finish the surgery. So thank you very much for your uh, interest, and uh, I would like to uh, show you, uh, have a good day, uh, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you so much.